Hello and welcome to the channel. In this video, I want to do a demo of how to scan this VR controller. So this is from the MetaQuest 3 headset, which I have, and this is the left side controller. And I'm going to be using the Creality CR Scan Otter 3D scanner to scan this object. I found this scanner has been really good at scanning a lot of things, particularly objects like this, like a controller where it's got some black and some rubber and some plastic pieces. I found other scanners have had trouble with these sort of areas or the buttons because they're a bit reflective, but the Otter seems to do it very well. So the purpose of these videos, and I'm going to do a bunch more of these of just all different random objects, is to give you an idea of my workflow and how I'll approach different objects. And so for this particular video, we'll be looking at the Quest 3 controller. Now, if I wanted to take this final scan mesh and export it and use it for something for, say, creating a little dock or something for it, theoretically I only need to do one side because they're completely symmetrical. And so I could scan one and then just mirror it. Something else I recommend you have is one of these little uh, turntables, these manual ones. So it's not electric, it's a manual turntable, so you have to actually turn it like this. You can pick them up on Amazon for like 10 or $15. They're really cheap, and I find it's really good for just controlling and getting those fine movements and being able to scan an object like this. I find the mechanical ones, either they can make a bit of noise, but also they don't always get the spots where you want. So sometimes you want the turntable to stop and pause for a moment. You can't really do that with a mechanical one because it's just going to keep turning and turning. But with a manual one, you can go back and forward and control it how you want. So I really recommend getting one of these. Anyway, I'm not going to go into too much detail. I'm just going to focus on scanning the object itself. So now let's jump over to Creality Scan software and begin scanning this. All right, so in our Creality Scan software, I'm currently using version 3.1.40. And because this is a small object, uh, these are the basic settings I have. So we have a normal object, a small object. We're just going to use geometry. We don't need to use texture or marker. We want high quality for the accuracy. And in my case, I'm gonna say turntable, and this should help remove that base as much as possible. So you wanna give your project a name, so I'm just gonna call it VR controller, and then we go to scan. And also you can see I have the CR scan otter connected here. So we go to scan. On the left side, you're gonna be looking at the exposure camera and also the direct feed camera. In the latest version, these two camera feeds are aligned, whereas before one was slightly off center, but now you can basically use either camera to visualize your object. So I'm going to pick up the scanner, as you can see, and just prepare it. So we're looking to get the distance about right, which is in between that good and optimal range. Obviously, if we go too close, it's not going to like it. If we go too far away, it's not going to be able to pick up that scan very, that object very well. So you want to kind of get that range right in the good to optimal. And if you find the exposure is playing around a bit too much, we can select here a manual mode. So we can select manual and you can see now that exposure is under a bit more control. So when it's going red like this, it means we're getting too much light reflection. If it's going blue, there's not enough. So you want somewhere where you can get away with a little bit of the either. Uh, this should be about the right distance. So we're just going to leave it there. So what we want to do is we hit start and that will start scanning our model. You can see my finger on the just the side of the screen there on that bottom camera. And I'm just using my finger to slowly rotate the object around, trying to keep the scanner as still as possible. If you do lose tracking, I can come back a little bit, let it pick up again. It's probably because I was moving too far away, so I can get in a little bit closer. It's moving back a little bit, turning it back until it recognizes again. So maybe we can go back around the other way. Once it gets a bit of data all around it, it should be much easier. So now we can start to speed things up a bit and we can start to go down a little more, trying to get that underside. Uh, we can try and get in a little closer on the underside of the thumbstick there, because it's gonna be a little difficult to get. So if you lose tracking, just go back to a previous point, give it a second and it'll pick up on it pretty quick. Okay, now obviously we need to uh, get the bottom side of this. So what you can do, you can either pause it or lift the camera up. So I'm just gonna pause it. I'm going to, as you can see on the camera, I'm going to rotate it around a little bit. 
And I want it to detect this again, wait till it stops wobbling some features that it's already scanned. So we can see this is some feature I've already scanned. It should pick up on it. So I go back to play, give it a moment to think, and you can see it's recalibrated itself. And now we can just slowly, because it's on its edge, I want to go a little bit slower so it doesn't wobble at all. We can start getting that other side now. Trying to watch the screen here, I'm sort of pulling back a little too far, so checking that distance is in the right spot. If I go too fast, it wobbles, so I just want to be careful with that. Okay, that's looking good. And I'll show you what I mean by if you can lift the scanner up as well, out of the way instead of pausing. So if I just shoot this at the roof, I can change the angle of my object. So I might go this way. Going back to turning my turntable so it's looking at some features again and just giving it a moment to think. And there we go, it's picked it up. So again, we can just start going around. Yeah, it's much more stable now, so I can go a little quicker. And I want to just try and get under there as much as I can. So we're trying to look for making sure all that mesh is as green as we can. It's showing us that we've got a good mesh. Uh, making sure we get that little end point as well. And that's the good thing with this manual one. We can sort of go back and forward like this and get it to scan all we can. And I think that's going to be enough for us. Uh, we might try and... Yeah, see, I, I can't quite get into that thumbstick too much, but that's not going to be a huge issue for me because really when I, if I'm going to use this for a model for a stand, I don't really care about the thumbstick. I'm going to use the, the base more anyway. So we're finished with our scan. I can hit stop, put the camera down and I'll go to yes to complete scanning. And now we need to process it. So over here we have like a one click processing menu. First one we want to do, because it's a smaller object, we want a quite a fine resolution. We want to capture as much detail. And this object has a few, it's quite organic, but it has a bit of sharp lines as well. So we want to get that resolution down as much as we can. So we'll probably go 0.15. The more resolution, the lower the resolution, the more processing it's going to need uh, because it's really closing that gap between the points it's trying to calculate and basically the resolution means like the more dense that mesh is going to be so i think 0.15 or 0.2 would be a good size for this and then we just click on this button and let it process this may take a little bit so i'll just speed up and come back when it's done all right, we're back and it's done a really good job getting rid of all that extra detail for us. This is why I usually delete any extra stuff after that initial optimization as it seems to clean up a lot more and it's also a lot easier to see than trying to delete it in the cloud data itself. So what I mean is there is this little bit left that we don't need. So we can delete that by holding shift and then circling around it. Uh, I've got the lasso selected. So if I was to do square, it'd be select as a square, but think lasso is better because you can control what you want. If I wanted to, if I accidentally went too far like this and selected some of this, I could hold down control, go around here, and that will remove my selection for me like that. And then I just need to delete this. So I can either, in this latest version, we can hit delete on the keyboard or you can click on the delete selection. And there is no other extra data around, I don't think. Uh, the model looks very clean. As you can see, it's, if you go too close, it's not going to be visible, but sort of having a little bit bit of distance gives you an idea of what our model looks like. You can see it's even picked up that small button there. Um, it's not picked up underneath the thumbstick, but I didn't really expect it to anyway. It was getting a bit difficult in that area. And there's a tiny bit in here, but that will be fine. I think there's enough information there for it. This last point here, I think that is actually pretty good. It's got enough depth and it's just missing the back section, but it should fill that in very well for us. So our next part is the mesh setting. So the object, the setting to really control here is our faces. The more faces, the more dense your final mesh is going to be. So the better quality you're going to get, but also that brings on additional processing time as well. And I didn't mention it before, but the optimization took just under five minutes. So we want to bump that up. I'm probably just going to go to 400,000 or as close as I can. I don't think I really need more than that because it is quite a small object. And then making sure hole filling is on. So it's going to fill these areas for us and it's going to make sure it's a complete closed object. So we just click on that button and it will start processing. And again, depending on your machine, this might take five or 10 minutes, but just leave it to do its thing. So I'll come back once it's done. 
All right, I'm back. That probably only took about two minutes this time, so very quick. And we can see it hasn't quite gotten the data I wanted under here, which is a bit unfortunate. We could that fix that up with additional scans, but for the purpose of this video, I think if I was to do something with this model, I'd basically be using this area anyway, so I'm not too fussed about that. But we could go back and do more scans to try and capture a bit more of that if we wanted to. And I may cover that in a future video. So as you can see, the quality is really nice. It's given us plenty of sharp features. I think this is a model that could work for uh, creating a little stand or a holder. Um, it looks quite nice, except that it's missing the thumbstick, but you may be able to fix that up in Blender or something anyway. So anyway, I hope you've learned something from this. If you found value in the video, then please consider subscribing to the channel and liking the video. Your support means a lot to me. I will continue doing a few more videos like this while I work on more high quality videos that I'm looking forward to showing off, more project builds and more tutorials and a complete thorough tutorial on the Creality Scan software. But for the moment, I'm just going to continue to pump out more of these scanning object demonstrations. So you can get a bit of a library and just see how I have gone about different objects around the house or around my environment and my approach to these objects so that you may learn something and apply it to something that's similar in your environment. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time, thanks for watching.